Hi guys and welcome back from Carly at the Herbothecary. Uh, really good to see you guys again. If you're new to the channel or like the videos, please show your support by hitting like and subscribe down below. So a quick disclaimer, this video is for entertainment purposes only. I am not a doctor or an ethnobotanist. I own a lot of good guidebooks and have been doing this for a while. So please always do your own thorough research first. Don't pick anything unless you're 100% sure of what it is. Check with a book, check with the internet, check with a, a experienced forager that might know more than you. Always make sure you've got the landowner's permission before you pick anything. Avoid areas of high pollution where they might have used pesticides and pick as high as you can to avoid where animals might have sprayed. Do not pick endangered species. Please always make sure that you only take as much as you need. Leave some for the creepy crawlies and the birds. And it is advisable to leave your foraged finds outside for at least half an hour in a cool place so that any of those creepy crawlies can find their new home. And always thoroughly wash your findings before you use them. In last week's video, we were out foraging for blackberries and nettle seeds to have a go at making blackberry and nettle seed wine. In that video, we covered the primary fermentation process of making wine. And in today's video, we will be starting the secondary fermentation and we'll be using the extra blackberries that we had left over in a vegan jello or jellies recipe. We'll also be making a blackberry syrup and ice cubes and ice lollies. I left the blackberries infusing in the water with the yeast and sugar for about a week. I say it was actually about five days in the end. And today we have our uh, demijohn ready and we're going to decant the almost wine. It has actually started to ferment a little bit. And I did try the siphon first of all, but as I couldn't get the demijohn low enough, it I did have some trouble with this process. And it did take about 45 minutes in the end for all of the liquid to pour through. And obviously we're removing the liquid from the berries. It might have just been easier to grab a sieve and a funnel and do it that way. But we did get there in the end and it is about an inch from the top. So we're just going to pop our um, stopper or our airlock in. This will stop anything getting into our wine, but it will also allow those bubbles to be released as the fermentation continues. So we just pop a little bit of water in that first bubble and try not to make a big mess like I do. And you will be able to watch as the little bubbles go up, they'll bubble through and we'll just pop that lid on. And I'm going to pop this aside now in a cool place. So not too hot, not too cold, around 24 degrees Celsius. And I'm gonna leave that until Christmas for the big bottling ceremony. Well, not till Christmas, actually till the 21st of December when we are having our winter solstice celebration. So over at our pot and we have our leftover blackberries. I had about 500 grams left over. So I'm just gonna pop those into my pan and then we're gonna top that up in today's case because we'll be making quite a few goodies. To that 500 grams of blackberries, I'm going to add two liters of boiling water. You don't have to add boiling water. It just helps it heat up quicker. And I allowed this to simmer away for about half an hour until the berries were nice and soft. And then I just grab my potato masher and I give them a good smushing to make sure that all of those juices have come out of the blackberries are, and are in our leftover liquid. And once they're all nice and mushed, it's just time to sieve out all the berries. 
So I'm just using this fine mesh sieve. Unfortunately, the bigger one that would be more appropriate has bigger holes in it and I don't want any of the little seeds or bits to go through. I used ladle to begin with as the liquid was still quite hot, but as always, I got bored and just grabbed the pan and popped it in. Now, I am going to smoosh it down as I go, not only to get all the extra juice out, but also to make room for the other berries. And I did pour it slowly so that it could all drip through. Then using my wooden spoon to just smush the rest of those berries and get all those good juices out. We don't want to waste any. So then our first recipe is the vegan gummies. My middle lady absolutely loves jellies and has decided that she wants to be vegan again so back in our pot we have 250 milliliters of our blackberry juice we have 25 grams of sugar Give that a good stir in and make sure all the sugar is melted and we want to be heating our liquid because the agar agar that we're using does need to be boiled for at least a minute in order for it to set and for 250 mils of water or liquid we will be using seven grams of agar agar now i have read that you're supposed to add it to a little bit of water first to stop it getting all gunky but I find just giving it a really really good stir in make sure that it's all incorporated works just as well so as I said we do want to bring this mixture to a rolling boil so you want it bubbling and you want it to bubble for at least a minute so we're going to allow this to sit for a minute and then we want to transfer our liquid to a jug. This serves two purposes. A, it makes it easier to pour. And B, the smaller receptacle also stops it from cooling too quickly. So our jellies won't set in the middle of pouring. And then finally, it's just time to transfer it into your molds. I'm going to be making little ones this time, but I actually made a huge butterfly one in one of my uh, cake molds for her birthday, which was the end of July. And let's just say it didn't last long. So I allow them to come to room temperature before popping in the fridge to set. With our leftover litre of a blackberry juice, we are going to be making a cordial, both for just using as a cordial. We're also going to make some ice cubes. So we've got a litre and we want 400 grams of sugar per 500 mils. So I've got 800 grams of sugar. Now I know it does seem like a lot, but we this is a cordial, so we will be diluting it down. A really good stir in and make sure that all the sugar is melted now we do want to heat this quite high as we do want it to become a syrup and as many of you know who have watched my other videos my eldest is actually diabetic and we use a dandelion in her diet to help maintain her blood sugars and as i want her to be able to have some of this cordial or the ice cubes if she wants and it is going to be very sweet i think this is a great opportunity to add in the dandelion and you know give her a fighting chance if she is going to have the syrup so i'm actually going to use the leaves and the root in this but as the active ingredients in our plants start being destroyed at 40 degrees celsius before i put them in i do actually want my liquid to cool down as much as possible it won't be as cool as 40 but it will be you know close enough so while that is cooling i'm just cutting up that root and the leaves now the root does have the latex coming out of it and i'd like that to you know not be the case so i'm just going to pop these in the oven at 40 degrees well actually 38 and i'm going to let them dry out a bit while it cools and then i'm just going to add those bits to our syrup or our cordial and i'm going to allow 
the still the heat that's available in it to pull out as much of the active ingredients of the dandelion as possible. Now the liquid did start to cool down a little bit too much for it to pull anything out over this short period of time so as I am using my pressure cooker I was actually able to set the temperature to 39 degrees until all that plant life had wilted down and then it's just time to filter that out the plant beds are quite large in this I only needed that fine mesh sieve again and we just again filter out all of those bits of dandelion trying not to make as much mess as I do and then I've got a 500 millimeter or half a liter bottle that I'm going to pop half this in for our cordial. I'll be popping some in these other silicone trays to make some ice cubes for my middle one who likes to pop the flavored ice cubes in her water. And with whatever's left, we will be making some ice lollies but with the ice lollies, I will actually dilute this down. Now I'm going to dilute it half and half. And while we were making our syrup and our ice cubes and our ice lollies, that was just enough time for our jellies to set. So now we're just going to pop them out of the molds. And because we're using agar agar, they do seem quite moist. So I often just pop them on a baking sheet or wire rack or some non-stick paper and allow them to dry for 12 hours and the stickiness goes away. But these are perfect vegan jellies. And my middle lady Athena can enjoy them guilt-free because I made the mistake of telling her where gelatin comes from. We have an exciting announcement here at the Herbothecary on August 24th, which is not only my 40th birthday, it's also my wedding anniversary. After many requests, we will finally be releasing the first Herbothecary ebook. We'll have two. The first one is Raiding Nature's Medicine Chest, eight recipes, plant based recipes that every medicine chest should have. This includes a bites and stings balm, a eczema cream, a yarrow styptic powder that I never leave home without. The second will be Raiding Nature's Pantry which will contain my nettle stew recipe, our wild leaf uh, pesto, our forage stir fry and another five on top of that. These books can be pre-ordered by emailing us at herbothecreenaturalhealth at gmail.com or if you'd like to, you can visit us at our Facebook page, which is Nat Natural Health at Home at the Herbothecary. I will pop those details down in the description box below. They will be available at £1.49 per book or £2.49 for both. Thank you guys again so much for your support. I've really enjoyed sharing my knowledge with you and I can't wait to get the book out. Again, thank you guys for coming back to the Herbothecary. It was great to see you again. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe and hopefully I'll see you guys again soon. Bye.